Hey, Justin. Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Rimwood. Yeah, it's good to be yeah. back. Hey. Rick, you're here at Charles City, Virginia. Well, welcome. This is my dad's antique museum here, so it's a little bit of a history and part of my inheritance. Excited to, uh, to get to check it out. Yeah, because you didn't come even to the operation. You we were, didn't. We 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 Good. There wasn't an alternator belt in the state of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, or the Carolinas. <laughs> but they had one in Atlanta. So, so yeah, I got it in yesterday morning. An alternator belt, that, that's something that, I mean, I, yeah. what are the chances of that breaking? Um, not, obviously not very often because they don't stock any. Yeah. So, their dealer got an earful. Yeah, so really, you got a $200,000 tractor sitting still and I can't do anything because I got a stupid belt broke. <laughs> so, <laughs> we got it right. So, Why does that sound really familiar? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, so, but, yeah, and it seems like, you know, so you're struggling now, and then things that pick up. I struggled last year in corn, things are going to get better this year. That's right. So we're optimistic, you know? That's right. Now, what, what about this weather right now? Um, I mean... Yeah, we just came off the second wettest year on record, and every time we get a little rain like this, it looks like we got flooded. Yeah. So, it's... Is the on. ground so saturated, yeah. it just... Yeah, so... But um, most pe a lot of people started, you know, I like to wait till the ground's a little warm and we get a good forecast and we're in that window now. And yep. then of course it's starting to rain. But it's, man, it's farming. We'll, we're persevering. Farming. You're probably yeah. a little bit late, aren't you? Well, we usually start the first part of April. We used to do some in March, but now that we're trying to push more bushels, mm -hmm. we, we want the ground to warm up a little more. And okay. we, we usually like to look at a five day forecast and if we got 50 GDUs in a five day forecast, we're gonna start planting. Hmm. And then if things turn south, then we stop planting. Yeah. And um, so we're at that window where we can plant. So as soon but, as it dries out. Oh, uh, we'll be running hard. I think I got all the bugs worked out of the planter. You know, I'm, I'm anal, I put it all together myself. And you know, my brother and my son helped me get it, get it tore apart and then I kind of What's put it What's different about this new deal? The um, closing wheels, we got some different closing wheels that they're doing some testing with. And then we also are putting fertilizer on both sides. Ends up, yeah. Really? Well, that goes in fur, but we're adding some fertilizer on both sides of the corn row. And um, so we're excited about that. We did beta testing for that last year and they got all the bugs worked out, so. Is that the three by two by two you went? Yeah, okay. yeah, we're doing the precision side. It's called Conceal. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It's kind of like when you try a new tire. Right, right. <laughs> when, it's, when it works, it's good. It's funny how so many things relate, you know? It, uh, 100%. But I'm guess. not going to hit the wall, I can assure you. <laughs> we didn't even make the showing. It is so bad. Sure. We had, um, all right, the storm, you, you came and picked some sorry yep. corn last year, so hopefully we'll put you in a combine with a little better corn this year. But <laughs> all right. we had a cornfield just blow over before, and then really? even here we just got, it was so wet, too wet. Yeah. Irrigated yep. corn just couldn't handle it. The one it. section, I mean, that section we, we um, picked was, was dry, but that one section over on the other side was still yeah. soaked, I, if I remember right. I mean, yeah. it was even wet where we were at. We had to watch where we turned around. But yeah, that's right. Yeah, you tried to spin the tires. I, I saw. tried to spin the tires. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I saw. Yeah. Who says you can't do donuts? We, I mean, he had me turn it right, so I was all out of sorts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> we, yeah. we were going right when we, when we Yeah, you should have been going left. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. And then it, re it steers from the rear, too. So yeah, that is a little different, you know. Yeah. But the sad part is, is the more that, the more that I drove that thing, the more I kind of wish my race car steered from the rear, you know. But the problem would be is if, if yeah, if it ever if it ever went wrong on the track, you'd be yeah. you usually you'd be complain when it steers from the rear. Well, that's the problem is when the front tires are turning, but it's steering from the back. That's not good. Yeah, that's not that's a good. That's not thing. good. Oh but, man, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, so the weather held out for y'all. I'm it, surprised. It, you're as surprised as we were. I mean, we gambled big time on the weather, and yeah, it, it ended up working out okay. I mean, we got back mm -hmm. to where we were at, but. If it had rained, you know, the hardest part for us is like, let's just say, because we were supposed to race this morning, um, uh -huh. if the race got rained out last night. So, uh, okay. I mean, obviously it's raining. We'd have never yeah. raced. But uh, if the rain had come and we had postponed till tomorrow or you know, mm -hmm. today or whenever, um, all of those tires that, that took off and all those guys that started on that set of tires, they would basically all the oils would would come out of the tire and it would be a brick. I mean, it'd be uh, like it'd be like driving on ice. 
Uh. So we had a set of tires that were going to be fresh in, in case the rain came. Once the rain didn't come, we were pretty much on even even playing yeah. ground. We were just behind all those cars. So, you know, we okay. had to try to play catch up and get back by everybody, which we went from 16th to second in four laps. Oh, wow. So well, we at least... In Richmond, that's good. Yeah, that was, that was at least good, but then we... That was that, fun to watch. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was, it was fun to drive, yeah. you know, except for when you thought it was going to go wrong, but... It's kind of like when you're... Uh, you know, your meter starts going up and you're making like three, four hundred bushels, yeah, you know? that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is fun to watch. I agree. Unfortunately, there. he got to the end rows. <laughs> yeah, we got, yeah. Yeah. That is, yeah. that is 100%. Next to a, yeah, hedgerow. Well, so. when we first, we got a farm western near Richmond. Mm -hmm. And when we first picked up that farm, we were planting corn. And I'm like, all of a sudden I heard this racket. Like, what in the world? And it was the jets flying by, getting ready. So we were on the flight pattern, which I didn't know, getting yep. ready for the, do the flyby on this, I guess, Sunday race. And um, then when we got to harvesting corn, it's like I was there every time that race would start. And we could tell, based on the way the jets were going, if the singer was going faster or slower than they had timed it's, it. It is crazy <laughs> how in tune they are with what's going on the racetrack. I mean, there's literally somebody in communication. Oh, yeah, I know. And they're like I either stopped or they're hauling to get there. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, they are. Uh, that was funny. So. They told me that a good flight crew, though, on the the on the flyover, a good flight crew will time it. But they said an inexperienced flight crew has a has a really tough time getting it right. Uh -huh. And they said that a lot of times you can tell. So like a buddy of mine's a pilot, and he's like, and he's done the flyover quite a few times. He's like, you can tell if they're experienced or if they're not just based on when they come over. He said uh -huh. if they're delayed or if they're early, yeah, they're not doing it again for a while. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I had some buddies that were flying to Texas to go quail hunting, and they, their whatever GPS stuff wasn't working, so they were doing the old style map and stuff, and they got to flying over an area, and they realized at some point in time they weren't supposed to be there because there was a F-14 or 16 flaps down, probably about ready to fall out of the sky because it was a Cessna plane. Yeah. They ended up flying over George Bush's ranch, and he had a delegate group there, so he was they were in a no-fly zone, oh, but they had... Two jets, they had one right beside them and the pilot was telling them to land. And then when they finally agreed, then another one flew right over top of them because he was like, getting ready to shoot them down and then a Black Hawk helicopter followed them all the way back to the oh ground. So. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah. That's, so not, they, that's not like your normal, hey, we had a slight issue. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a, this, this, this could end really badly like we 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 might, might not, not be home in time for dinner yeah, we, might, yeah. we might not be making the quail hunt that's yeah. for sure so then they they land and then the fbi agent comes out to the you know runway and you know shotguns and stuff all in the in the airplane and kegs of, or cases of beer in there and so it's like what are y'all getting ready to do yeah <laughs> gonna have a good time is what they were but yeah. <laughs> yeah they never did tell me what that cost them so <laughs> So, that, uh, that was the most expensive quail hunt in history. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. But as, as, as for a good story, though. That's funny. So just to give you all a heads up what's here, um, my late mom and, and my dad still living, they um, just like to collect stuff. And they go on vacations, and they'd take a, they'd take a Suburban, and then they'd rent a U-Haul and bring stuff back. That's crazy. And um, so they got, you know, just found up shelves from old... Um, feed stores that closed down locally or in you know, some distance. Was this a working store at one time? No, this, no, this was This built, is just for collecting? This is just for his collection and my mom's collection. And this he is was awesome. Big in, yeah, he was big into antique equipment and then the toy tractors and so, so it's, it's kind of neat. And you know, the signs on the wall, and it's just amazing. And he goes on eBay and you know, eBay's cost us a fortune. <laughs> I saw them. I actually have one similar to this. I, well, I, I hope I still have it. Yeah. I had one when I was growing up. I had one that was similar to this. So yeah. I'm hoping that I still got it somewhere. Pedal tractor? Yeah. So John Deere pedal tractor? You probably still ride it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think yeah. I'll fit on it quite as well as yeah. I used to. It doesn't have a motor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, so it's just, it's been a neat, neat watching them collect stuff. He got, he, there's a tractor in there that, I don't know what size motor it's got, but when he brought it here, he was just grinning, and he popped the clutch, I think, did a wheelie, and took really? off. I thought he was going to roll it. <laughs> it was something. That's so you awesome. can see it there. Yeah. Thank you. So we can walk on into the, the big part. This building is definitely way bigger than I yeah. 
anticipated. It's way bigger. Yeah, well, just, I, just keep giving. this is a tractor he did the wheelie with. So he he popped the clutch and it. I thought he was gonna roll it. That's like a. He could tell you all. He he. Tied up. Yeah, it's like a four ball main three fifty in that thing. It is a six. What is that thing? Hang on. Now you got me wondering. Did he build this or? No, on? he bought it. He, yeah, he found it on online. That's not the way it came. That's the way it came. Not from deer. No, somebody souped it up, stretched it a little bit. And... So yeah. Yeah, all these run. He'll he'll start them up, take them out, really? wash them up, and then pull them back. It's a 283, two bolt, V8. It's got a real it narrow. Is. It's a real narrow center port. Okay. They only built them between 1962 and 1963. Who? Chevy. That was the only years this engine was built. So they they put that engine in originally. Well, no, no. I'm just saying this 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 block number, this part number for this engine. Okay was only built for, for two years. So whoever, you know, whoever put this thing together, that's a yeah. very rare engine. Hmm. It was actually the engine out of a Corvette. That's what, what this says. Mm. That's starting oh. to explain the wheelie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Here's a 283. So, hmm. They made this in a twin carburetor or a single carburetor option. So there was a twin, a twin one version. Uh -huh. It was in a Nova and an Impala originally. Huh. And over in a pound. Yeah. That's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, he brought it there, put it right out there, and he said, watch this. And he hopped on it, started it up this loud, and he popped the clutch. You know what's cool about it, though, can you, is... Uh, can you demonstrate that? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. <laughs> yeah. What's cool about it, too, though, is, is it has a style of, like, the old drag cars, where the, the driver actually sat behind the rear axle. Well, I know. Uh, look, look at it. Look how far the, back you the, sit. The pumpkin is actually... You know, your knees kind of go up and over the pumpkin, and then yeah. your feet would be down here. It looks like a tractor dragster. Yeah, yeah. it does. <laughs> yeah. Dragster. Yeah, dragster. dragster. Yep. Any, have any Porsche tractors in here? No, any Porsche? Nah. I don't, no, I don't think so. You know, Porsche makes, I guess it used to make tractors. Okay. And uh, you know the story better than I do, Justin, but they were affiliated with Algar. Okay. Tractors. Uh-huh. So this is a Porsche tractor, right? Okay. So it says Porsche diesel on the uh -huh. deal, but it's an actually the, the brand of the tractor was an Allgaier. Oh, so, wow. Uh, 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 doesn't the front badge have Allgaier on it? It does, yeah. I was gonna try to find the, the actual like picture of the badge. So um, uh, an acquaintance of, of ours lives in uh, Germany. He actually went and found one of these for me. So I actually have one of those front uh -huh. panels. It oh, says wow. Allgaier tractor in it, and then it says Allgaier on the side of the tractor. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. But they only made them for a, for a few years. Can you send that to me? Yeah. Let's see here. That'd be cool. No, he means sending the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got space for it right here. Yeah, that's right. It's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, well, obviously it's mostly deer, but a little bit of everything. It's probably not the biggest collection, but it's very diverse. So. It is really diverse, I, and and the thing that I like about it is, is that it's, you know, a lot of people collect a style of tractor. Yeah. You know, like they've got a certain style they like to collect. No. As long as it's a tractor, it looks and it's and it's in good shape. It's, yeah. They did a little reconditioning now. He just he just he's got somebody that might do it, or yeah. Now he just buys already conditioned. Yeah. But so. he's done some of them himself. Yeah, he's played with some of them himself. He, now he'll set it off and get it painted. But getting the motors running and tires and yeah, we're doing a little bit of all that. Is he still uh, is he still doing it? 
Uh, not anymore. He, he, we have a guy that works on some equipment, and he's got a couple tractors he's just kind of tinkering with. Mm -hmm. Some that my dad had bought. He hadn't bought any more that needed work. So I like this one. This one's really cool. He used to have signs for him, and it'd stick, say, where he bought it and who he bought it from and a little history about him. But Cleveland tractor. There's one in here. Sears and Roebuck had a tractor, and you just ordered it from the catalog. Uh, from the catalog, yeah. So when we were at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, there's a museum there, and they have a Sears Roebuck car. They used uh -huh. to have a car you could buy in wow. the catalog, and they uh -huh. had one in the basement. Uh -huh. It was pretty cool to see, you know, because it's like, you know, we talk about now, you know, like, um, off the showroom floor or whatever, but I mean that was yeah. literally you open a catalog and you ordered your car, you know? Yeah, it's like picking shoes or something. See here. Fiori, Illinois. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that on a cat. You don't think? Not that I ever saw. Put Fiori, Illinois on? Yeah. Hmm. I think. Isn't that close to where you guys are? Right? Yeah, it's only about an hour from us. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Our neck of the woods. Yeah. When I go to the airport up there, I drive right by the cat plant. Mm. Stay right there. I mean, you're a quarter mile from the cat plant where we stay to uh -huh. go to to go to the airport there. We fly out of there a lot. Fly in and out of there a lot. So is that where your race team is too? No, the team's in Charlotte. So Charlotte, I, okay, so that's where I am. When I go back and forth, so I live in Charlotte now, uh -huh. and when I go back and forth, to fly in and out of Springfield, I gotta fly to Dallas. Yeah. And it just doesn't make sense for me to fly from Charlotte to Dallas, Dallas to Springfield. I'm crisscrossing. Yeah. So uh -huh. if I fly to Peoria, I gotta drive an hour back, but I'm okay. direct flight in. So. Gotcha. See, I'm from Pleasant Plains, Illinois. Okay. Which is a small town, 700 people just outside uh -huh. of Springfield. Okay. Justin's from Riverton, Illinois, small town just outside of Springfield, basically better communities to Springfield. Uh -huh. So we're, we're the hometown hookup. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Neat. And in fact, that's how we got together. Really, really. together. Uh huh. Uh, was okay. because he was from he was a hometown kid, so we could go racing with him. Uh huh. Did. Okay. So it awesome. worked out well. So yeah. I get, to, and it's nice too because, you know, before before I was able to do anything with Brant, you know, I really wasn't traveling home as much. You know, I, uh -huh. I don't have any family that that lives in Charlotte. I mean, sure. we're kind of on our own. But with the schedule the way that it is, unless you have a, a specific reason to go back. Right, you're you're constantly kind of always gone, and so now it's nice because we can we can usually use it as a you know we're we're doing something usually whenever I come back home. Uh huh. It makes sure. it nice. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it really nice. So I go back to Springfield. Everybody's asking me for better technology for the farm uh -huh. and an NASCAR championship. Yeah, that's right. It's two things. <laughs> bring them both. Bring them both home. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Which one's gonna be easier? Uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're always coming up with new products. We'll, we'll get yeah. back to you on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So far, the technology. Yeah. What's <laughs> the better ROI? Yeah. Oh man. It's one plus the other. Yeah. yeah. You know funny. what's cool about the program we do though is it, it's it's been fun because you get to meet a lot of people in different in different areas of the agriculture industry, right? Whether it be farming or yeah. Um, like turf side of things or or really I mean it, it, there's so many different areas you know I mean I've been to pest conventions I've been to, <laughs> to you know fruit and nut conventions and you, huh. you know you do all of these things and, it, and it's so funny because even though you're focused in, a, in an area you're meeting people from all I mean you know some people that may not ever cross paths ever you know are crossing paths because of what we do and, and it, that's for me that's been the funnest part yeah. You know what, and the people that come to the racetrack, you know, we got a, a really diverse group that they come to the racetrack, whether they be from the United States or other countries. Um, you know, it's always hard because we, when we... How, how many countries have you... <laughs> a lot. ...met or, you know, yeah. with us in the last... A lot. ...years, it's insane. And it's always hard because you feel bad, you know, especially if they don't speak English. You know, you want them to have the full experience, right? If, if, if you're going to bring somebody in to do something, you want them to have the full experience. And what I found though is, is that when the engine fires up and it's really, really loud, they get it immediately. <laughs> like the, the experience is it just as cool as if they knew what was coming, you know, as somebody, mm -hmm. was, somebody was able to, to explain to them. So for me, that's probably been the coolest part is just the amount of people that we get to see. We go to, you know, whether it be Farm Progress or FFA National Convention, there's just yeah. a lot of stuff that you do that, you know, without this relationship, I'd have never had the opportunity. So it's, it's, it's pretty special. Yeah.
That's a good point. You know, some of the funnest to me at the track was having the FFA kids in the pit box. Yeah, uh -huh. that, that was cool. We had a we had a whole group of. Maybe the it's because you're running up front, but you know. Yeah, we had a whole. Group <laughs> of they're taking selfies and you know. And, <laughs> Yeah. Tweeting the FFA and, yeah. and carrying on, you know, and, how, do you, how do you do this? Yeah. yeah, it was cool. How I learned Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> it really was. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. That's funny. Oh, wow. That is neat. So, <laughs> cool. And, you know, we don't work physically as hard as we did when I was a kid or my dad, but mentally in hours. We put in way more hours than they did because it's got headlights and, yeah. you know, everything drives itself now. But back then when it turned dark, you either waited till the sun, the moon came up, and then you went back and kept working, or you just went home. Yeah. And it was like, huh, we don't do that anymore. It's crazy to think, you know, some of the, some of the struggles. I mean, there's different struggles now. Yeah. Right? Like it, it's, it's not that it's easy. It's not that it's, you know, you, you made certain things more efficient, but every time you make something better, you yeah. cause some other issue that you got to go through. It's, it's just, it's incredible to think about. I mean, like you said, by hand. I mean, I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine doing anything by hand anymore. Uh. When you, get, you have the same weather issues, yeah. you still get the same pressures, but mm -hmm. it's going to take longer and be harder to put that crop in or take that crop mm -hmm. out. You're going to get it in this year. Everybody's, yeah. you know, it's going to take a little bit of time, but you'll right. get it in. These guys, when you're doing this stuff by hand, imagine how hard <laughs> that was. Well, they didn't do as many acres, first of all. Yep. But to the east of us is where Williamsburg is. And um, just before the Civil War, all this was clear. You, there's a river three miles to the east of here, and you could see that river, because it was all cleared out. And they, after the Civil War, they let the ground that wasn't productive just grow up into trees. But they did it, they cleared it all by hand. And wow. they, they bedded all the, because all the corn fields were on beds, so they bedded all that by hand. And, the original strip till. Oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. So, Back in the timber ground, you could you used to be able to see the old corn beds where they did, but now since they've been cut so many times, they knocked it down. That's crazy. So, yeah, how long has your family been? They, we in were here in the 30s, in the, the 1930s, 30s. so not for so long. Uh, there's some that have been here in the 1800s. Okay. So, but we farmed the ground there that started. It was first farmed in 1609. Oh, wow. wow. And we farmed that ground in Williamsburg, or right there at Jamestown been continuously farmed since 1609. That's insane. Second place we saw 300 bushel dry land corn. So you think about where people say, hey, your farmers are being bad for the environment. No, we're making it better. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of neat. And so I like to share that story to the That's to a the fascinating public. point. It's not about mining it. It's, yeah. it's about producing off of it. Oh, we're just making it better. Yeah. You know, change some practices. and. But here, I think I come up with something new, and when my granddad was living or my dad was acting, he's like, yeah, we tried that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, here I, you know, narrow row corn. You know, we thought about doing narrow row. Well, they used to do 20-some inch corn, you know, way back then. And, you know, then they went to 30 because that was the common. So here, I'm thinking going to 15. Well, we already tried that. Well, yeah, all right, what, yeah. was, what was their reason for it not working and going wider? Because they were having, well, the narrow row, because they were doing so much cultivation and stuff, the narrow row was just harder because the equipment was knocking so much crop over. Gotcha. So then they went to the 30 inch. It, some went to 36 or 38, but my folks went to 30 inch. Yep. And um, so that was, that was a big reason. Now we've gone to, you know, using pesticides, chemicals, so no-till. Yep. So we, you know, we ain't worried about that. Right. Running over as much crop. You know, we, get, we still get that sprayer blight. If you're familiar with that, sprayer tire yep. runs over the crop. Man, so we get that. And really, there's no way to fix that. No, not yet. <laughs> I mean, unless yeah. you unless you got to hover hover around. Yeah, hover, hovercraft. Yeah, yeah that's right. We we'll have to we we'll have all these drones or something flying over. So it won't be long. We'll be, we'll yeah. be using drones for spraying. I, I yeah. saw when we were at the Commodity Classic. Were you down there? Did, uh, yes. Yeah, we went. In Orlando. Yeah. I only got to go for one day this year. Okay, they had a big commercial drone that was for spraying. Really? Yeah. So. Not so big, but I mean, it actually did some spraying. All right, we're getting there. You right. know, it's, it's, it's really crazy. I mean, to think about where technology is in that regard. I mean, that's just, to even think about that. Yeah. You know, I'm guessing the batteries are pretty big. Oh, uh, hit plenty of them. You know, because <laughs> the payload's going to be pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty heavy, pretty, you know? Yeah, well, they didn't do but so many gallons. And um, he said what most of the common people were the crop dusters. Yep. 
when they get to the corners, they can't get them. So they take a drone out there and fill in the corners that the plane or the helicopter couldn't get. Makes sense. Well, yeah, I thought that was interesting. So. Well, you know, in acid chemistry, technology keeps going too. You get, you'll need less. Yep. Right. So. Yeah. You'll be able to cover more with less. Yeah. Yeah, but a pound of fertilizer is a pound of fertilizer. It needs so many pounds of fertilizer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for making that point. Make sure you guys get that part. You know, we like that. What he just said. Yeah. yeah. Pounds a pound and a half pounds not enough. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. So we we didn't pick these high yields with low rates of fertilizer. I can assure you, we were very efficient. Well, this place just keeps on going. It does. It really does. I had one of those when I was a kid. Make sure I got plus plates. Really? Before I had my driver's license. Because they'll haul. Oh yeah. This thing is go. That's awesome. I like the color, man. That color is cool. Oh, really? Yeah. I said, it needs some red on it. Originally, it had some red on it, red and gray. So this one's been a little bastardized. <laughs> Looks like, you know? Where's the red? How about the Road Rally 2000 right here? Is the right price? You can put it back on? Yeah. <laughs> the original sponsor. I mean, it's, it's... I'm not sure you would fit, though. Hop in there. No, I don't think so. I'm not going to fit that one. <laughs> I was going to recommend it. I'm afraid I'll break the thing. I'll, it'll fall apart on me. And if it's made it in here, there's a reason why it's in here. So I don't want to be breaking anything that's in here. That's really cool. Hmm. Must have just been for a display or something. Yeah. What, what is the race car for? Uh, that was for the church. They had, yeah. yeah, they had some thing going on with the church, and, and they did that. So that's really cool. We need to change it to number seven now, right? That's right, that's right. Actually, yeah. 12 was my first number in NASCAR, so, oh, was it? so technically it's still okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good deal. No, that's awesome. That's really yeah, cool. so no, that, was, that was for the local church. So, yeah. It's crazy, man. Some of the stuff in here is just, just awesome. That's the thing that kids, especially nowadays, and they're not seeing the signs, yeah. the, the, especially the, the, the old pop metal signs. Like, yeah. those were just cool. You yeah. know, they, yeah. they just had this. Yeah. I mean, they were kind of going out even when I was a kid. But, man, you, you see some of the signs and they just, they resonate. You, you see them now and it's like, man, I remember that from yeah. when I was a kid. That's you right. Know, you, you, it's, it's easy to yeah. remember. You got a lot of old brands up there. That, yeah, he does. They do look familiar. Yeah. Wow. Like skis. Skis made down by St. Louis. It is? Yeah. The factory's down there. It's right by Peebley where we race at. I remember the the Sunbeam bread. I mean that. Yeah. I mean that logo used to be everywhere, you know. Yeah. Energy packed. Now it's high carb. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Like this. This is cool. Are we gonna finally drive something? Yeah. Not here. <laughs> not not out of here. We won't. Not unless my dad was oh, here. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Do you have any holes in the collection? What are you looking for? Um, or is he just opportunistic? Yeah. I, Ford I, I son. I think he's eventually just kind of doing more green okay, stuff. Okay, that's cool. That's neat, isn't it? He, um, the last time my mom and him went on a trip, you know, we always guessed how big a U-Haul he was going to bring back. And this particular time, he said, fellas, the trailer out there, I need to borrow it for a day or two. So, because he didn't bring a U-Haul back. Well, it was, it was this. They were working on it, and the engine caught on fire. You see how the paint buckled oh, wow. on the top? It's, the, after he bought it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so now he's, what year is it? 55? 55. 3,100, too. Yeah. It's just a cool, it's a cool truck, man. I love the wood bed. Yeah. Yeah, he, um, him and my mom rode, we were planting corn um, down the road a little ways and they drove up. So I took a picture of them in it. And, Can um, I open the door? Yeah, yeah. So I took a picture of them in it and gave it, got it blown up and gave it to them. Just so they'd, cause it was a, I think it was probably one of the last times my mom came out and watched us. Hmm. You know that, 
something. I you can hop in there. It's okay. Something that's that's kind of crazy about it is, you know, you, you don't see huh? yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see like the white the white painted steel interior. You know, uh -huh. like there's just something cool about that. You know, nowadays you got plastic and yeah. suede and leather and all that stuff. It's really cool, but yeah, man, there's just something cool about these old trucks. This uh, I want to build a late '40s, early '50s truck next. You know, that, the '72 was kind of my favorite. Like that was the uh -huh. style that I really enjoyed. But uh, the more I've been around, especially to some of these older ones, that's like that's my go-to now. You know, I want to <laughs> I want to build one and, yeah. and uh, you know because you. Kids nowadays don't get to experience. I mean, they, there's obviously far and fewer in between yeah. of these older trucks, and it's like, man, they, they just, they're just super cool. Yeah. yeah. You gave me the bug after you did yours. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. I'm like, I really like the old. In fact, remember I told you I was tearing pages out of Hemingway? Yeah. 65 uh, Chevy pickup I came across. It's been uh, redone. It's, it's really cool. That's uh -huh. awesome. Yeah. The other thing that's cool about these are. Just um, make the call. <laughs> that's right. The other thing, if you if you look, they actually these these were kind of ahead of their time because, you know, a lot of a lot of vehicles back in the day, um, they were big and they were wide and they were kind of uh -huh. you know robust vehicles, but the the designers always tried to make them look like they were moving fast. So like if you look, the uh -huh. the, the door frame and everything's sure. moving forward, so it made it look like the truck was moving okay. fast. Huh. So it was more enticing right. to people yeah. because you know if you look at like a lot of your um, cars that didn't sell, a mm -hmm. lot of them have. Uh, not a lot of a lot, not a lot of shape to them or a lines to them, and they don't ever look like they're doing anything. They just look bland. Uh -huh. But then a lot of these like these old trucks and a lot of like your the reason why your Corvettes and your Mustangs and things like that were successful was because they were shaped in a way that made it look like it was going fast and sure. people were drawn towards it. Huh? I never thought of that. So to package a truck <coughs> to make it kind of stand out, they moved yeah. the cab forward yep. and make it look like it's going fast. But it was a pain in the butt because if you look at these back windows and the front uh -huh. windows, how they all wrap. Yeah. They broke more putting them in than they than they were able to to, uh, to make work. So, so whether you're going fast or not, at least you look like you're going fast. At least you look like you're going fast. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're charging into battle, right? Like that's yeah. always the thing. You're 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 moving forward. Yeah. So yeah. that's huh. cool. I love yeah. that thing. Yeah, I do too. You still driving? Uh, he he'll drive it around occasionally. He, he might go out to the road. And it's been a couple years since he's taken it out. I think he got remarried two years ago and. I don't think he's driven it since he got remarried. Hmm. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that one's not leaving. A couple things here won't leave. Air well, if not, if you need a place for it, let us know. <laughs> yeah. We'll help you out. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. No. <laughs>